Hello viewers, this is Kulsum Ahmed. Today I'm here with the topic Budget Constraint and Indifference Curves. This is the topic of microeconomics. Let's start with the topic. What is budget constraint? A consumer's budget constraint identifies which combination of goods and services the consumer can afford with a limited budget at given prices. Means here few things are clear. Number one, you are going to have budget, like the money should be with you. Number two, you are going to make choices in two products, not out of 100 products, but only in two products. Number three, you, the prices of the products will also be given. So when we have three things, these three th things, we are going to face the problem of budget constraint. Now, uh, the total amount in your pocket is $100. Price of movie is $10 price of music concerts is $20 now this thing is clear then start with the consumption bundles choices bundle A shows that we are going to consume zero amount on the concerts so we are going to not make any expenditure on concerts and we are going to consume all hundred dollars on the consumption of movies so how many movies are we going to watch will be hundred will be done so 10 multiplied by 10 because the price of movie is 10. So the quantity of movies that we have watched is also 10. So 10 multiplied by 10 will be 100. Then comes bundle B. Bundle B tells us that we are going to consume one uh, concert and we are going to consume $20 on concert and we are going to keep $80 for the movies. So one movie's price is 10. So 10 multiplied by 8 will be 80 then move to, to bundle c c tells us that we are going to consume two um, two quantities of concerts that will be telling us that 40 concert uh, 40 dollars on concerts and 60 dollars on movies then bundle d tells us 60 dollars on concerts and 40 dollars on movies then bundle e tells us 80 dollars on concerts and 20 dollars on movies then E tells us $100 on concerts and $0 on movies. So these bundles are clear and you are going to choose, pick any bundle out of these. Uh, means okay, this uh, only you are going to follow this pattern. Because this pattern allows you to consume 100 percentage of the income that you have. Nothing is left and nothing is more. Like if you are going to consume $120, this will not be okay. So you, you should be consuming $100. Now what is the utility? Utility is the function of X upon Y. So we have two commodities with us that is X and Y. And price of X and price of Y is given. On one side we have taken number of concerts. And on the other side we have taken number of movies. And we are going to uh, pinpoint all these points and later on we are going to combine these points and we are going to get the budget line. Now what the point Y tell you? Y tells you that you have consumed less out of your budget. Like you have watched 4 movies and 1 movie price was 10. And 4 into 10 was 40. Means $40 you have consumed on movies and $60 is there in your pocket. But out of those 60, you have just watched two concerts and one concert's price is $20. So 20 multiplied by 2 will be 40. So 40 is the consumption on movies and 40 is the consumption on concerts. So total consumption that you have made is of $80 and remaining $20 are left in your pocket and those are telling us that you have not achieved utility maximization. So utility maximization will be achieved on point A, B, C, D, E and F. Any of these points are giving you same level of utility like uh, you are going to enjoy the full consumption of your money the point z tells us that we have gone beyond the budget line the budget was 100 and we have consumed 120 dollars now what is the slope of budget line slope of budget line indicates the spending trade off between one good and another the amount of one good that must be sacrificed in order to buy more of another good if price y is the price of good on the vertical axis and price x is the price of on the horizontal axis then the slope of budget line will be price of x upon price of y so simply it is the uh, division of x upon y now what is marginal rate of substitution marginal rate of substitution tells us 
in economics the minor rate of substitution is the rate at which a consumer can give up some of amount of one good in exchange for another good while maintaining the same level of utility means on the same budget line as we discussed before that we had a b c d and e points so if you are going to move from one point to another you'll have to forgo some of the things to achieve another type of things now how to do this we are going to see it here so we have all the points that i told you before and we are going to have uh, a budget line okay now we are going to move from c to d for moving from c to d we will have to drop down to c to z first so the difference between c to z will be 6 minus 4 will be 2 so difference is 2 we are going to leave two movies and how many concerts we can get out of those two movies you know the price of movie that is ten dollar and two movies mean you are you, are, you have saved twenty dollars and that twenty dollars you can use for the consumption of concerts so how many concerts will you be enjoying just one concert because the price of concert is high this is why you will have this difference now let's do the calculation minor rate of substitution is minor utility of x divided by minor utility of y now what is minor rate of substitution upon x upon y is change in x divided by change in y means uh, now here you can see that overall what we do is we keep the uh, vertical axis on the numerator and the horizontal axis on denominator but here we are going to do the opposite why the reason is that when we do that slope that I discussed before we do that while measuring any dependent and independent variable but here we don't have any dependent and independent variable both variables are in quantities so there is no price that we are discussing in budget line so one commodity divided by another commodity this is why we will say change of x divided by change of y so change of x was 3 minus 2 and change of y was 6 minus 4 so what is the answer that is 0.5 it means we are going to leave two movies to have just one concert so your achievement is 0.5 now what are the indifference curves? An indifference curve shows a combination of two goods that give a consumer equal satisfaction and utility thereby making the consumer uh, indifferent. Fine. So let's see what is that. Now what are the characteristics of indifference curve? Indifference curves are supposed to be convex to a region. Why are they convex? Because they, uh, we believe that each point on indifference curve is giving us same level of utility. So it will be convex to a region. Then indifference curves are made on the budget line. It means uh, that if we are going to see the different bundles on budget line A, B, C, D, E. So how would we get to know that which combination or which point the consumer has picked? So that thing will be further elaborated with the help of indifference curve because it is always tangent to the budget line and it tells us that this combination where it is tangent to the bundle line this point is achieved by the consumer and consumer has cons done the consumption in this way so here the numbers are not given but you can see where the, the where it is tangent then higher the indifference curve is higher is the level of satisfaction why because you know that each indifference curve is made on budget line so if indifference curve is moving outward it is telling us that it is having more satisfaction so why do you get more satisfaction when you have more money in your pocket so let's make the budget line to get the clear idea so the, here you can see I, indifference curve 2 is giving more satisfaction as compared to indifference curve 1 and indifference curve 3 gives less satisfaction as compared to indifference curve 1 then can indifference curves intersect with each other this sort of questions uh, often come in examination but you should know it will never happen why why it will never happen because we believe that each indifference curve gives the equal level of uh, satisfaction and if these two are intersecting that will mean that they are giving equal satisfaction why because they both are going to be tangent on the same budget line so definitely they cannot be indifferent they would stay same this is why we will say that it can never happen every indifference curve should either be upside or it should be downward 
fine so then we can say that this interference curve is giving more satisfaction as compared to this but if they are intersecting we will believe that they are going to be on the same budget line and they are going to give equal level of satisfaction so there is no need to make two indifference curves rather we will make one indifference curve because we are always in between two commodities then income effect income effect tells us ke, that if our income is going to increase if it was hundred dollars and now it has increased to two hundred dollars so when it was hundred dollar you were enjoying 10 movies but with two hundred dollars you are enjoying 20 movies and in hundred dollar you were enjoying five concerts but now you are enjoying 10 concerts so overall your your capacities have increased this is why you will be enjoying more now let's see what is the price effect and substitution effect now price effect tells us if we are going to increase or decrease the price of one commodity definitely it will move the indifference curve either forward or backward so here you can see the price of concerts has increased so beforehand we were enjoying five concerts but now because the rate is high so we are just enjoying 2.5 concerts the same line we are going to do if the price of other product will be increasing or decreasing so what will happen so here you can see uh, that the movies have dropped down the prices has increased if it was 10 now it is 20 so when it was 10 we were enjoying 10 movies but now we are just enjoying five movies so this will be the movement so this was all about my today's lecture if you like my video please like share and subscribe my channel thank you